know Bianca's um, a missionary? <clears throat> My little brother is crazy, right? I mean, he's crazy. If I may, he appears to have a delusion. What the hell is he doing with a delusion? She loves kids. boring everybody's boring I'm thankful for my friends family and this photograph of me Reality often hinders both love and human happiness. Despite this the need for love and happiness remains essential for our standards of living and ultimately, it's up to us and our creativity if we manage to keep our sanity and moral conduct or not. This is your host Amelia and today we dive into a challenging matter of social existence, couple stability. Synthetic love Sounds a bit strange, like a sinister invention of the consumerist society. But it's not like that at all. If there's synthetic happiness, with such positive effects on our mental health, why wouldn't we also have synthetic love? But let's just start with the beginning. Namely, let's define the synthetic happiness. The scientists who study happiness, this interesting phenomenon of human nature, have discovered that there are two types of being happy. One, the natural happiness and two, the synthetic happiness. While the natural happiness is lived when our wants come true, that is rather seldom, the synthetic happiness is experienced whenever we are able to produce it, regardless of the context. The synthetic happiness occurs when, not having our wishes fulfilled, we are able to do this mambo-jambo which makes us happy. The mambo-jambo consists in a particular outlook on life and a specific way of making evaluations that will lead us towards a mental state of well-being and even to what we call happiness. For instance, we could appreciate the things we have and depreciate the things we don't, and behold, we are almost instantly happy. But while there's happiness of synthesis, there's also the love of synthesis because after all, love is a way to happiness. As the natural love produced via fulfillment of romantic wishes is just as rare as the natural happiness, there's always room for a little help if we want to still have love in our life, maybe not like in the movies but at least one that keeps us warm at night and offers us crumbs of satisfaction at times. And we can learn from the synthetic happiness adopting the same principles. 1. Appreciating what we have that is our partner and 2. Depreciating what we don't have, like other potential partners. If we are to apply these two principles, many couples' challenges are simply solved. Of course. This way of tackling a couple's problems excludes more serious things like emotional abuse, intolerance, and physical violence that would need a slightly different approach. This cerebral style is meaningful for at least a few reasons. For instance, because natural happiness and natural love are not supported by reality. Just a few of our wishes come true and it's been discovered that passion only lasts for 12 months until we reach to a better mutual knowing. Moreover, it's been discovered that if we are stuck in an abusive relationship and kept there by our feelings, it's enough to evaluate it in negative terms. What are the annoying habits of our partner? Therefore, if we want to keep a certain partner and perpetuate our love for them, we may have to use a positive evaluation of them and even transform their flaws into qualities. In other words, 
The scientifically proven secret of relationship longevity and couple happiness is using pink colored sunglasses. And this is what we could very well call as synthetic love. You will ask, okay, but is this real love? Well, the real love is rather a virtual construction than an actual reality. The religions might talk about the real love involving unconditional self-sacrifice and why not altruistic self-destruction in the name of love if we really want to experience something like that. On the other hand, each one of us might define the true love just as we please. According to our own needs or interests, true love is when you are still in love while not meeting your loved one for many years, or maybe, on the contrary, true love is if you are still in love after many years of living together. Love and hate as survival tools are rather primal forms of energy that occur naturally when we interact with the environment, having an orientation role. What makes them be real is rather the product of civilization, a result of religious and cultural models, than a mere product of nature. As studies have proven, nature is weak and unable to provide resources needed for the couple's stability. If we were to limit ourselves to what nature has given us and what we naturally feel, the social life would be hideous and our children would reasonably despise us. We would have tens of children with tens of different partners and a hard time remembering their names and their birthdays. We are animated by primordial energies that take the form of our personality, wiser or more naive, vulgar or refined, hot or cold, laid back or fierce. As a matter of fact, the way we love is an excellent personality test that gives us the measure of our moral evolution and our mental health. A real love or at least a fulfilled one is the result of compatibility and context but also, the result of a well-developed capacity to synthesize love. Given the fact that natural love is rather invalid, it desperately needs synthetic love so that social life as we know it, does not go extinct.